I know after our last adventure video that you like adventure videos. And that's, that really became apparent in the last time I drove from pole to pole here in Ireland in an EV. So I've decided to do another adventure video, which is this one. This is the Kia Nero. This is brand new on the market here in Ireland. Uh, it is a new Kia, but it's, it's a familiar Kia as well in the fact that the Nero already exists. But this one is a ground up electric car. So we're gonna do one thousand kilometers in this car today around the coast of Ireland but it actually starts in the middle of Ireland right here in Port Leash. Leash County Council office right here behind me. Uh, I have a full charge in this. Kind of disappointingly it says 362 kilometers on a full charge. I think that's just the way it's been driven over the last while. We're going to set off from here going over to the east coast up along the east coast across the border of Northern Ireland back down the west coast all the way down to Cork and then across the country again to Waterford, Wexford, and back up to Dublin, and then back to Port Leash, which is about 1,036 kilometers according to Google Maps, which tells me that would take about 13 hours straight. But this doesn't do a 1,000 kilometers straight. It's about to stop for charge. Let's see how long this actually takes. I think it's insanity, but, well, I'm just here to make it look cool. Hey, look, I want to get myself together here to get driving. I'd love you to hit the subscribe button. Uh, you know this channel needs subscribers at all times. So listen, hit the subscribe button, hit the comment, hit the like, hit the share button. It's always good. It helps the channel out and costs you absolutely nothing. Anyway, let's get back to the drive. All right, so we're going to start it up. Uh, like I say, I have a full tank of juice in it right now. And it says 368 kilometers to empty. So what I'm going to do is just change the uh, mode. Is it mode? No, that is it. One of these, there it goes. And I'm gonna reset that. There's that reset. Idle mode, we're good. Drive information, all zeros. After recharging, I'm gonna leave it long because I just charged it up. Um, okay, sunglasses on, because it's a bit bright outside for the moment, and let's go. A thousand kilometers, we're going. Wow, this is going to be exciting. I'm sure EV owners get very excited by this stuff, but you all like the, the, the action of driving places, and doing stuff. So this one I'm doing. God, that's very steep. It's much steeper than that was. There we go. Right. Haven't actually got onto the road yet. Relax, relax, relax. Now we're following a map today. So the map is going to be a Google map. Uh, that I made up in the last like 48 hours looking at all the places I could go and I'm going to flash it up on the screen now just so you know what I'm talking about so you know where I am and what's happening uh, but our first place to go of course is the M50 so you have to go up the M50 to get to uh, Dublin town and then we're going to turn north from there a uh, little information about the car so this is the brand new model of the Kia Nero. So this just came out. And if you want to see a review of the car, the first time I drove it, um, I was in a Nordic country, having it spin it. You can click it on it here. If you want to see the other video that I did, the other adventure videos I did, I've actually made a new playlist called Adventure Videos. Uh, and there's a few in there already. So I've already done a few ones driving long distances in electric cars in a sort of adventurous way. Um, and so this is just another one to add to the list. We have to go all around the roundabout. Will you get off the roundabout? Mush. Go on. Go on out. Go on. Out of the way. Like, hello. Hello. I'm trying to go around. Thanks. God. Some people just don't understand roundabouts. Hmm? This man doesn't understand lanes. Bloody hell. We haven't left Port Leash near the collision already. <laughs> Right, crack on, through the traffic lights, let's get to Dublin. All right, just getting onto the edge of Port Leash now. Slow going, because it's going to be a Friday vibe today. We are heading east, so you can expect the sun on this side of the car for a while. <laughs> Apologies for that. There's nothing I can do. I, I did order the placement of the sun to go to the other side of the car, but I can't help it. It's going to be on this side of the car. Uh, but our sat-nav is now set, so I laid out the map. There's Google Maps telling me where to go. Uh, I'm going to mute her actually, which is beautiful because Apple CarPlay is in this car and means I can bring up my Apple CarPlay device and I can bring up all my Google Maps and I can mute it just like I use normally. Uh, I have Apple Music all set up for a bit of tunes through the day, uh, but it's there going to navigate me all the way to, well, round Ireland. Like it literally is the circuit of Ireland, <laughs> essentially. Uh, the reason, so there are a few things, a few rules to this game, right? 
Number one, I can charge whenever I like, whenever I need to. So I'm just gonna use the charging network as, as I run out of power. I think that's the best way of doing that one. Same as you would, you know what I mean? Uh, also, I'm not going over the border to charge, so I'm not gonna go all the way up to Belfast or all the way across the northern coast. Good reason behind that. Uh, it's not in control of us. So, so ESB Networks does have a charging network in Northern Ireland, but it's not well supported. And I don't think it's fair of me to show you what it's like charging. I think we'd be better off sticking on this side of the border across Monaghan towards Sligo. Uh, I will be crossing the border because the border's weird in that part of the country. It just kind of weaves in and out of us here. So the road kind of dips in and out of Northern Ireland. But I don't think it's fair for me to actually target the charging points over the border because it's not on this side. So we're going to avoid that one. But it means that I've gone from here to Dublin, Dundalk, Sligo, Galway, Limerick, Cork, Waterford, Wexford, Dublin, here. <laughs> a couple of things that uh, I've noticed while driving along at 100 kilometers an hour. Because you sit here just churning through miles, you get to see other drivers and how aggressive they are. And it seems a lot of women are very aggressive in cars these days. They're just watching how much tailgating is going on, how much speeding is going on. I can't say people are actually speeding. I can't see their actual speed. I'm just kind of gated by how fast they go by me, you know. Uh, because I'm overtaking things like this car and a trailer. And there's another thing called a pee wagon, which I've never seen before. It's like a mobile toilet. There seems to be a lot of pent up, like, I'm in a bigger hurry than I should be stuff. You know, if you just slow down, you get there anyway. If I was to go, put this in context, so if I was to do this whole journey at 20 kilometers an hour faster, I'd do it in like 13 hours instead of 13 hours and 20 minutes or 13 hours and 30 minutes. So it doesn't really make up a lot of time. The only way speed like that works is on an Autobahn where over very long distance, you're going at very high speeds, which does reduce your journey time. But in this country, the difference between 110 and 120, it won't really gain you back any time. So you might just slow down and save your fuel, because fuel is expensive at the moment. All fuel, including electricity, we're electric. We're all battery today, baby. motorway uh, we're on the m50 now so we have turned north dundalk i'm on the way uh, i got about 56 minutes to go to get to dundalk or so uh, which is pretty good we've done 85.3 kilometers i've lost about 60 kilometers it's good right i'm down to 14 and a half kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers because i'm driving so smoothly and so nice and so sweet and now I'm in the Gladiator School, it's called the M50. This bit here, before you reach the, uh, the toll bridge, is a bit chaotic uh, as people struggle for what lane they're supposed to use and what lane they're in. And because this lane now becomes kind of full of trucks, lane two and three then take the brunt of all the work. Um, interesting, the, the, I learned to speak English in a little while. Uh, interestingly, the M50 was originally a two lane motorway. I can remember it being extended to three lanes. I also remember the massive queues and tailbacks that were caused by the toll bridge on the M50. Uh, anyway, I'm still heading north. We're uh, now heading northbound Dublin Airport, Dublin Port direction, all the way up to Dundalk and then across by the border. Efficiency wise, I cannot complain. And I have, if I need to get a charge, I will need to get a charge today. I actually have my little Kia charge card. This is a different thing. This is the idea that Kia are going to manage your charging, uh, which is very clever, very interesting. Like I say, I'll leave a little link down below to the Kia thing. Rep. We're still on the motorway. Motorways are going to disappear now fairly shortly because I'm, I'm running out. <laughs> I'm leaving the M1 in a few minutes. Uh, so I'm just up around Dundalk. I think it's about 15 kilometers from where I am now. 
hour 14 kilometers so so i'm going to be hanging a left to go across the country just under the border um along through mona over towards sligo uh, i haven't stopped for power i have 223 kilometers left i'm at 15 14.9 14.7 somewhere around there average fuel consumption i've covered 162 kilometers um the car has definitely been covered it's only 994 kilometers on the clock of the car in the first place it says of 179 kilometers to sligo from here about two hours and 36 so we're in for the long haul on this one this is going to be a big drive Mary McAleese Bridge right here in Boyne Valley. Absolutely gorgeous bridge. Why they call it Mary McAleese? It's just got no way to call it after people at all, to be honest with you. Seems strange. Still a beautiful bridge though. Onward and upward, we have 245 kilometers left. I've covered 142 kilometers. So you see, the expected range is not what you think it is when you set out on your journey it often will go a lot further depending on the weather and so welcome to county loud loud we're in you we're on the way uh next we'll be turning west to head to sligo uh, i have 194 kilometers range left i have 155 to get to my actual destination just the first stop that i'm going to make to get a charge i have just crossed the border so <laughs> the border the speed limits are now in miles per hour instead of kilometers per hour and the roads have changed the lines have changed everything has changed there's some reg plates here now are suddenly uh, uk reg northern ireland reg uh, the petrol station names have changed like there's one called blessings blessings never heard of it um and so i crossed the border so there there's the problem now Right now I'm in a sterling zone, I'm in a miles per hour zone, I'm in Northern Ireland. But I, to me, nothing changed. I just drove along a road, the road happens across the border, goes back in the other side every so often. Mad, isn't it? Okay, so thoughtfully, thankfully, my speed thing has taught me that I'm supposed to do a 96 kilometers an hour. So now you know, 64 miles per hour. Very clever car, it does tell you what your speed is supposed to be in miles per hour, but it tells you kilometers per hour. Classy. It's always the same in Ireland. The further west you get, the more interesting the roads become, even the people become. It just becomes a sort of cool place, like rolling hills, there's lakes, there's forests here. Uh, cliff edges and bridges and just it just gets more interesting we're, we're just we keep demolishing stuff in the name of efficiency you, if you know what I mean so we, we build a huge motorway we build the M50 we build M1 it's all it's all efficient it's all like straight through the landscape whereas the old way of building roads here was to kind of you had to work with the landscape because you couldn't just go through it, it cost too much money go around it. Oh yeah, we just finished, see? He is indeed. There's a Nissan Leaf here. What's new? <laughs> There's always a Nissan Leaf at every charge point. But at least it's working, which is a good thing.
We've arrived at the first charge point. It'll sit rep. 340 kilometers done. 61 kilometers left in the tank. I'm tired. I need to go to the toilet. And um, I need to charge up some stuff. So I'm going to charge up the car as well. Right. Let's find out how this works. Okay, that's our charge point. Both the port first anyway. Look at that. You see there's little yellow lights. Here, said I'm low on charge now. So let's see if I can even see the screen. Authorized! Woohoo! We're good! Flowing in. There we go. Charger anxiety. This is where my charger anxiety really comes up. <gasps> it's good, it's good, it's good. We're charging. We're charging. Yes. Now we got to tidy up the car. We've got some electricity going in. This is good. Let's hope it goes in rather quickly now. So we get on the way, start going south because we're as far west as we're going to go now. Getting the work done here, look, copying all files, setting up the cameras, charging the drone battery, come around the front, charging up the mics off a big charger thing, big crisps, your bottle of water, there's another drone battery charging there, and come around here and I'm charging the car, I mean for real, like... How could you possibly ask for more? Apart from the PHEV that's charging beside me, which I think is just nonsense. I, I, it's okay though, it's okay, it's okay. It doesn't matter that he's not actually charging at all. At all. There's no power going into that car, so there's even flashing light now. Look. Nothing. He's full. Still hogging the charger though, right? <clears throat> Okay, it's a tiny bit windy here, but I want to point out a few things wrong with the charging network in Ireland. Where is the roof over this? Like nothing. There's nothing to protect me as I stand here using a very high power electric cable to charge my car. Nothing. Two. Where's the safety? Let me show you something. The street I'm on and I'm charging on right here has a main street over there, but it's, it's barred off by this big concrete wall this here. There's another car here. And if I step out a little bit, you can see it's a largely empty street, right? So no matter where I point the camera now, you're gonna see this pretty much empty everywhere I go. If somebody decided to walk up to me here to the car, steal something that I've got inside the car, I can't even just drive off. I have to get out of the car and unplug this thing, put it up there, and then I can drive off. So quite simply, there's no safe, there's even a camera over this thing, nothing. Nothing protecting me here at all. You're on your own. So if, ladies and gentlemen, you're deciding to charge your car here at night time, and you're on your own, somebody walks up to you, who knows? Part three of that is this. So you have a look at this sign up here. A bit closer to on. So part three of that is not the no dumping sign, it's the sign above that, but it actually says no parking unless you've paid in display. Yeah? So the pay and display parking begins here at this pole, which is inside. So you have to pay for parking and pay for charging at the same time. And they're the simple reasons why electric charging in Ireland in the public network has a big problem with it. Because none of this is being addressed, no matter how many videos I make about it. Funny that now. We got 80% in. I think we're going to leave it at that and get on the road again. That's all we need really is 80%. Because that's going to give us 300 kilometers range, which is enough to get to Limerick easily. So let's go. on that M17 stone walls and the grass
grass is green, the stone walls, grass is kind of green, trees are going slightly brown. But we're on the round 17, is what we're doing, heading towards Galway. But we'll be moving off then towards Limerick. We never actually make it to Galway, there's a big circular road around that. Um, weirdly, Google has decided that avoiding tolls is faster than going through tolls. Simple as that. I thought it was quite interesting. But anyway, uh, I am still on the way, and guess what? I'm stuck behind a camper van. Remember the last time we did this journey? I was stuck behind a camper van, and he pulled over and let me buy this one. It's not doing something. He's just sitting there, just sitting there, doesn't care less what speed he's doing. Come on, he's helping keep on going. Anyway, we're, we're making progress. We're all right. 363 kilometers done today. Uh, we've a little under 200 kilometers to go now to get to Limerick. And I have 276 kilometers range. But I know there's fast chargers. What was that? I know there's fast chargers in Limerick. Good, honest, fast chargers. So I'm heading for them. That's where I'm really going. And it's all good, all well and good, good in the hood. Let's rock and roll. Welcome to County Galway. We've entered Galway. Tum is not far away where I stopped last time, actually. The sun is just going down over there. It hasn't reached the horizon just yet, but it's pretty much on it now. It's just seven o'clock. Uh, I don't have, um, I have an hour and 20 left to get to Limerick, to another charge point is what I'm aiming for, actually. Uh, I try to get to one there. I have a decision to make now. I'm, a critical decision to make is to go and find somewhere to stay for the night or drive on into the night. It's like I'd still have another, so I've done 555 kilometers by the time I reach Limerick. I have to do that again. Do I do that at night time? Or do I stay the night somewhere and do it tomorrow morning? See, I'm a lunatic. I would I would literally go on into the night and keep driving till the dawn again. <laughs> but uh, I'm too old maybe to do that these days. It's too much of a thing. Maybe I get too tired. So I think I'll just go and get uh, a little place to stay tonight and uh, pick it up again tomorrow I'll do that after Limerick get a charge maybe first beautiful sunset isn't it really nice I'm also listening to Pink Floyd do yourself a favour open up your favourite streaming thing open up Pink Floyd and it's called Breathe brackets in the air the 2011 remaster version is oh peachy sounding do yourself a favour and listen to that now So last update, uh, I got a charge and we're getting a charge at the moment, just kind of back up to 32% now. Made it here no problem, the car is amazing, I'm tired now, but the car is amazing, um, working absolutely perfectly. It's the speed of the chargers are the problem. The chargers have been working, the tools I've used today, but the 50 kilowatt hour speed is actually more like 44, 48, 49, realistically, was double that you'd actually get on your go on your way a bit quicker you know it, it's kind of it's the charger speed now as well as the charger anxiety is causing problems and anyway, i'm going to top it up here and then i'm going to move off and get a little bit of sleep <laughs> 